please define born again. I know that this is confusing even to the media. I've heard them try to deal with that. Remember when Jimmy Carter talked about being a born again believer and it became this big issue with the secular press. And of course, they have no idea what it means and no idea how to handle it. It comes up in a wonderful passage in John chapter 3. One of the Pharisees came to see Jesus by night privately because he didn't want to be exposed as being interested in what Jesus was saying, I suppose. He starts off by complimenting Jesus by saying, Master, we know that you must be a man, a teacher from God, for no man can do the things that you're doing unless God is with him. And, uh, well, that was very complimentary. But Jesus jerked the rug right out from under his feet. <laughs> Instead of uh, letting him go on with the uh, flattery, Jesus throws in something that would have just, and, and it did, it just completely shocked and surprised him. Here's what Jesus answered. Verse 3, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see, the word means understand, the kingdom of God. Nicodemus had come to Jesus wanting to discuss the kingdom of God with him and all of its various facets. But Jesus said, look, unless you're born again, you can't even understand the kingdom of God. So... It's impossible for me to discuss it with you. The answer of shock is revealed in the next verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Well, that shows his complete ignorance of what Jesus was talking about. So in verse 5, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born of water, even the spirit, the Greek word kai in this context means even the spirit, water as, a, uh, as an illustration of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. In other words, this is not a physical birth I'm talking about, but rather Jesus says this is a spiritual birth. I'm talking about, and unless you have it, you can't enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, you can't even understand it. So I would say this is the great imperative, wouldn't you? He goes on and he says, Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. And I want to bring out something here because Jesus was really, uh, really getting to the subject. The word uh, you here is plural. Now, being from Texas, I understand the plural is you all. <laughs> so what he says here is you all must be born again. So he's he's telling Nicodemus, and not just you that needs to be born spiritually, but all of the Sanhedrin you represent, the rulers of Israel, need to be born spiritually. And then he goes on and he illustrates. He says, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it is coming from or where it is going. So it is everyone who is born of the Spirit. The wind blows where it will, but you can't see it or know from where it's coming. Well, let me tell you something. For a, a very formative period of my young life, after I got out of the Coast Guard, I was a captain on the Mississippi River down by Buras in Venice. You've seen a lot of that on television recently, I'm sure. And uh, I, I operated a ferry, I operated tugboat, I operated uh, high-speed crew boats that went out to the oil field drilling rigs out offshore. And uh, I was uh, in several hurricanes down there when I was working there. And... Uh, it was just about the time I'd gone through a hurricane that I first was reading this chapter in a Gideon's New Testament. This was, this was how I came to know the Lord, reading on a tugboat about the, uh, 
new birth. And uh, when he used this illustration, I thought for a minute, okay, what a perfect illustration for the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. It's like the wind. You can't see him. You don't know where he's coming from or why, but you can feel him. It's exactly the way the wind was when the hurricanes were there. I couldn't see the wind, but I could feel it, and I could really see what it was doing. And uh, you couldn't tell exactly from, from where it was coming or why, but it was there. The Holy Spirit is like that. You can't see him. Uh, you can't know exactly why he's there, but you can sure feel him. And you know he's there. And later you can see the results of what the Spirit does. And Jesus said, so it is whenever anyone is born of the Spirit. Now let's see what Nicodemus says here. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? He was completely confounded. Now, Jesus pays him a compliment in giving him a slight rebuke. In verse 10, Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not understand these things? The word the, the definite uh, article, is before the word teacher. And whenever it's in the emphatic position before a title, it means the, the supreme one. In other words, he said to Nicodemus, you are the teacher of Israel. In other words, you're the greatest teacher of Israel. So he wasn't talking to a flunky. He was talking to someone regarded as the best teacher in Israel. And he says, yet you don't understand these things? Well... All of that is important to understanding what does it mean to be born again. You see, uh, there's a Greek word translated again, born again. That is the word anothen, anothen. Now, uh, anothen, its first meaning is not again. So he's not really saying you must be born again, although that is certainly implied because it is a second birth. But the word anathon doesn't talk about uh, consecutive order. It talks about source. The word anathon is used many times in the scripture, and you look it up in the best Greek lexicons, and its first meaning is from above. So what he's literally saying here, unless a man is born from above, he cannot understand the kingdom of God. So he's talking about the source of the birth, not the number of the birth. However, it is a second birth. So what he is saying here is unless a man is born from above, he cannot understand the kingdom of God, nor can he enter it. So when he talks about that which is born of the flesh is flesh, the physical birth. And then he says that which is born of the spirit is spiritual. He's talking about the spiritual birth that is from above. Now, what exactly does the new birth do? The first man and first woman were created as tripartite beings. I mean by that body, which is a material being, soul, which is the immaterial being and which is your personality, and spirit, which is that part of man that is able to know and understand God. God is a spirit, and it's the kind of life that God has. Now, when... Uh, man, by his deliberate act of defiance, went against God's word and rejected the relationship with God, he instantly died 
spiritually. So that from the time of the first man and woman, everyone born was born physically alive, but spiritually dead. We all are born with a body and a soul. And the soul can be, you know, it, it has the ability to be trained to a very high level. But we are born body, soul, but spiritually dead. And unless we have the Holy Spirit create within us a rebirth of the dead spirit, we don't even have the means of understanding God as a person and understanding the things of God. So we're spiritually dead. And the absolute necessity of uh, coming to know God is to be born of the Spirit from above. And it's a miracle. Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And he says, marvel not. The wind blows where it will. And you hear the sound of it. You feel it. But you don't know where it is. You can't see it, you know, where it comes from. So is everyone born of the Spirit. Listen, when I took a step of faith all alone on a riverboat on the Mississippi River, and I uh, was reading the New Testament, and I read this third chapter over and over again, because for the first time I said, there's something here that I'm missing, but I think I can understand it. I finally came to the conclusion I wanted to believe that Jesus died for me and that forgiveness he would give me if I would receive it and give my life to him. I wanted to do that, but I didn't know how. No one had ever told me how to, to believe in the sense of receiving God's pardon. So I turned to the back of this little Greek, uh, Gideon's New Testament, and it said that uh, if you've made a decision, <laughs> I just aimlessly turned to it, it said, if you've made a decision to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, pray this prayer. Well, I prayed the prayer as it was written. And it says, now, if you prayed that prayer, sign your name and date it. I did. I signed my name and I dated it. It was in January of 1955. And uh, I, uh, I had, for no, no apparent reason been troubled for a period of about a year. I didn't know why I wasn't conscious of anything wrong in my life, but I was troubled. And the, the moment I signed my name, I prayed and signed my name, a peace came over me. I couldn't understand. And uh, it didn't have any bells ringing or anything like that, but there was a definite peace that came over me. So I went to sleep and uh, well, that's interesting. The next morning, I woke up, and the first thing I wanted to do was read the Bible. And as I read it, compared to when I'd read it before, it started making sense. And then I realized, hey, that spiritual birth must have happened to me. I can understand things that were very impossible for me to really understand. Well, that's the way it happens. The spiritual birth that comes simultaneously with you receiving God's gift of pardon and giving him your life and asking him to make of you what he wants. That new spirit is put in you. That becomes a completion of your whole being. You are now body, soul, and spirit. And that spirit is the place where God communicates with you through his word, through communing with him. And it is that spiritual nature that begins to desire God. You still have the old nature in the soul that wants to do everything contrary to God. But there is this new spiritual nature within this spirit that's been born in you that will always want to follow God. There is a conflict that sets up and you have to learn to depend upon 
Christ and his spirit for the power to overcome it instead of you trying to beat it. But nevertheless, even when you're out of fellowship with God, the spirit within you will grieve and you won't be happy out of fellowship and you will want to come back. And uh, the very civil war that takes place in you is evidence you've been born again. So I hope that makes it understandable.